So the organization uh, I work for is the RECI, the branch for uh, vocational training. It promotes, just to be sure on our mission, it promotes uh, and supports the integration of technology and education. It stands for Réseau, Education, Collaboration, Innovation et Technology. Um, and the network just recently, this for the school year, really got bigger uh, because 19 regional consultants positions were created for vocational training. I'm one of them. And my region is the uh, Anglophone uh, school boards. Um, the plan for the session is to uh, complete this brief uh, introduction, not more than more 10 minutes of me uh, talking, because after that, I would like to shut up and take notes to hear your point of view on professional development, uh, to try to bring back at the end, uh, if there is any uh, consens uh, consensus, uh, ask, uh, ask for your feedback via a form, and maybe make plans for, the, for future collaboration on uh, trying to provide to the educators in the uh, serving adults, whether in VT or AGE, uh, professional development that really match the needs that uh, we have. The uh, objectives is that I propose that we leave out the question of what the PD should be about out of our today of our discussion today. Uh, I think our realities are so different that discussing if we need more about video editing than or uh, adaptation measures is not pertinent. Um, but so we could focus on the characteristics of the PD that is best for our milieus. Are we talking uh, establishing reading material, webinars, video tutorials, internships, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, second objective would be to, uh, to, I'd hope that we, we, all of us, we would leave this session with a clearer idea of what kind of uh, PD to set up, to select from the list when we have, when we get proposition or we request also when we face uh, a need. And as I mentioned before, I would like to maybe make plans for uh, the future. Um, setting this up in the context of our uh, competency uh, framework, uh, of course, the competency nine and 11 are gonna be crucial in being proactive about getting the PD that we uh, need. And since I firmly believe that many of the solutions are gonna be somehow tech-related, uh, competency 12, which is the mobilizing the digital uh, technologies. On your, the right-hand side of your screen, you have the wheel of the dimensions of the digital competency framework. Um, note the elements of collaboration, personal and professional empowerment, and problem solving. I know I'm talking about a lot, but I'm going to say one last time that this is not going to be a lecture, and we will be looking together into finding solutions. Before we get started, I would like to highlight six elements of context that I found in an article in the Engaged Learning magazine, which is the English version of École Branchée that is for better uh, known. It's a study, it's a recent study from 2001 from Marie-France Boulay. Uh, she surveyed uh, youth sector teachers, but from the information that I see, I have no reason to believe that the, the trends would be fundamentally different. Maybe the numbers are gonna be different, but uh, I think it's the, the, what it highlights is common to all of us, but we can discuss that afterwards. So element number one, uh, now Bill 40 requires that teachers do at least 30 hours of continuing education, when which is not continuing education in the sense of the, what the school board, uh, you, the idioms that the school board use when they put the AGE and VT together, but continuing education in the dev professional development of the teachers. The number is 30, 30 hours over two years, an average or 15 hours a year, but it's, it's the, uh, over a, a longer, the longer period of time that it is calculated. Element number two, uh, government defines this professional development or continuing education as participating in structured activities, but things that you do on your own are also going to be counting in that uh, development. So reading a book, getting a subscription to a specialized magazine, 
and um, making a, a, what's the English word for contabilization? A total of those uh, hours is going to be there. Element number three, which was one, one that was that was a bit surprising to me, professional development is not unpopular when the, the PD activities are done during work hours, 99% of the teachers show up and 72% of the teachers are participate, state in the survey that they are participating in some. So it's something that a large majority of us are doing. Element number four, the PD offer offered does not match the criteria of effective PD. However, uh, the concept of effective PD is a, uh, 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 I'll give you references if you want to know more about it, but more specifically, the, what teachers are offered, it lacks uh, specificity of the context, it doesn't meet immediate needs, it lacks active learning, it's mostly the expert showing up, presenting, and then everybody individually tries to apply that in their practice afterwards. It lacks the, 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 the develop, it lacks the stimulation of collaboration between the teachers or the, the communities or the faculties. It, and it also lacks cohesiveness. It's not applicable, adapted, congruent with the person's values, with the school success plan. Like it's kind of dropped down. Element number six, most teachers don't feel the PD they get is the PD that they need. This is a bit, uh, a bit uh, I was impressed by this uh, number when asked in which uh, professional development action the teachers spend the most time, only 39% point out the activities set up by their administrators. Six, which if you flip the statistic around is that means that 61% spend more time on other activities than the one organized by their, by their school. In, uh, in, in element number six, when questioned on uh, the obstacles, of course, the lack of time that we mentioned in our, uh, in our uh, Jamboard at the beginning, um, the, but the lack of funding also is uh, mentioned, the lack of the recognition of the PD effort. Um, and, but the main, main barrier that teachers identify is the lack of substitute teachers. Teachers are not willing to leave their room, abandon their student to go do development. The, uh, and I, I, to a certain extent, it's a good motivation to we, we, but it's kind of, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. So before we go signing up for conference, before we get those surveys about what PD do you want for this school year, here's a big bunch of questions. Is there really a performance gap to close? Are teachers competent in what they're doing? Is there a type of activity that you prefer? What can we build for ourselves? Uh, but can we build it ourselves as well? What kind of changes are we looking for? Uh, do we want to change the effectiveness of the system? Or is it personal development or autonomy? Do we want to upgrade teaching practices? improving students' learning outcome? Is training always the answer? If not, what else? What are good experiences from the past or dreams for the future? And also, are the considerations the same for AG and vocational training? So if it's OK with you, I would like to stop sharing my screen and open your floor to your comments. And I might uh bring back the questions if our conversation of course if you have questions about everything i talked about you're more than welcome to ask them as well yeah like i find the points from that article really interesting i just completed my master's thesis i was studying um educational technology at concordia and my thesis happened to fall right when the pandemic started um so that's what i decided to study was about um, the impact of the pandemic on teachers and how it changed their use of educational technology. And when I asked, I worked with, interviewed eight teachers um, in adult ed across Quebec, and pretty much everybody said that the one-size-fits-all PD was not helpful, it was overwhelming, 
it didn't get reinvested. Like what they needed was really like personalized. Um, they really appreciated peer to peer learning support from their colleagues who would recommend different things to try. Um, and that that was what was the most impactful was when they were working on something that was meaningful and relevant to them and directly applicable to their context. Go ahead, Vicki. Uh, well, just to piggyback on that for, um, so I teach in the social integration program and they have, you know, at the, the proceed level set up the um, social integration network. And that's been the most helpful as far as professional development for me um, than anything else I've received because a lot of times, you know, in this sort of general adult ed, they'll try to launch things like, you know, workshops on differentiation or things like that. But if we've been teaching a number of years, we've had all those workshops, we implement them already. It's not relevant, but having that opportunity, what I like most about that network is that there are topics we discuss, but we also all, always have the chance to ask one question of the group. Um, and so it's other people, you know, working in the province in the same program and that's what's been most helpful um, and then you always also have references now the next step for me would be having that opportunity to go and and see a center that's had this program in place for a number of years because it's new to have a teacher in place for that program in our school board um, mm -hmm. but you know being able to visit when you talk about that peer-to-peer -peer, but actually like in person and seeing um, and I don't know if that exists in the adult ed sector in the youth sector we always had the opportunity Opportunity with our consultants to apply for PDIGs where those kind of opportunities would exist for us to go and visit and implement those and, and have those opportunities. But I don't know if it's uh, if those kind of PDIGs exist in the adult ed. So that's a they question. They do actually, yeah. And they just okay. opened up, like, so that's through LCEQ and they do, um, they are open to adult ed. And I believe VT, I'm going to go check their website right now and put it in the chat. Yeah, because when Mark mentioned internships, I was like, something went ding in my head, like those classroom observations of, of our, it can be so valuable because exactly if you've, how can you build it if you've never seen it, if you've never done it, right? But if you can see somebody else, then you can start imagining, oh, this is what it could look like in my classroom. And like, I, I love that idea. I'm going to implement that directly or like I'm going to tweak it in such and such a way to make it work for my context. Awesome. Michelle, I think sure. you were the one who had your hand up next. Yeah, I'm. I'm also. It's going back to the um, the one-on-one -on -one peer teaching, peer learning experience. Uh, I find myself that that's. I I, I agree with that uh, that approach. I, I I do believe that a lot of. I mean, there is an effort of, to organize PD activities within the centers on the various ped days, so on and so forth, but again the, the the solution or the the approach is always the one size fits all which is i think people get people still take from it but i think people at one point start realizing oh again 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 um which leads me to to to, to think about they've they've recently created um in voc and in voc um teacher mentor positions uh, in the school board. Uh, two positions have been opened for, uh, for in Lester B. Pearson. And I think that would be, it's the first year that it's being implemented. Obviously it's at its baby steps. And I don't know how much, how much actual professional development is going to be able to come from that, but I'm really hoping that that approach continues. And that is, it's not just for the duration of one, um CBA uh, yeah. and I have a feeling I have a feeling that I think that would be the approach to to get teachers especially new teachers uh to start integrating the professional development approach immediately into their practice I think that's quite important um I find coming to the end of my bachelor's and everybody's telling me, oh my God, you're going to be so happy. You have all kinds of free time, but I can't help but think, yeah, but I learned a lot of things. I want to keep learning. Mm -hmm. That's my approach. Um, that's how I basically fuel myself. But what I'm also realizing is that the various PD activities that I 
reach out for are kind of changing my focus from the teaching of my trade to the possibility of teaching about teaching. Mm. So that's kind of where that's the crossroads that I find myself at after, uh, I want to say six, seven or eight more years between eight and nine years of Vok teaching of my trade that I've been doing. I'm kind of at a, find myself at a crossroads right now. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's my, my take on it. Yeah. To answer the, your question about like, or your comment about like, I hope that this mentorship thing doesn't disappear. Uh, I don't think it will because it's mandated by the union that all boards yeah. implement mentorship programs. So um, hope, hope, the, I, I doubt that they will disappear. Yeah, I hope, I do, I hope they don't. But the thing is, is I'm, I would be curious to, um, not that I'm keeping tabs on it, but I'm for, we're fortunate to have one of the mentor teachers working out of the center here. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of, every time we get to see each other, we kind of say, okay, what's happening? What, like, what's the feedback so far? What's, what's the engagement level? And it's, it's kind of slow. So yeah, for sure. we'll see. Yeah. Here too at Riverside, it's, it's very slow to be implemented. Um, I think because like we're so understaffed at the moment that everybody has so much on their plate. Um, it's also like we see it yeah. happening like which we seems see what's to be going the on. case in most centers yeah and because there's so much turnover too a lot of the time like it's hard that you like once you get something built and then that person leaves and then things can kind of fall apart in between uh yeah so we, we don't have that as much like institutional memory maybe as we would as we would like yeah nancy so yeah just a Definitely what uh, Michelle just mentioned, um, I think is very, very important. Um, we, uh, in the last year in particular, we've had to, to take on a lot of new teachers. Um, so that that is definitely, um, uh, the teacher mentorship uh, is, is very important. Um, to do with PD experiences, I'm still of the mindset I love. I love um, learning about my trade and and um, all the new things that are continuously changing and bringing it back to students. So over the years, I've really tried to, when I've had the opportunity to, to they're, they're not specific PD activities that, that um, you know, through, through tr- the traditional routes that have come to my attention, um, it's more, um, I've, brought, I've brought to professional development uh, committee to see if it was, possible to go on these experiences so so that it could um, help me to uh, grow as a teacher and bring it back to the students so that's I guess um, I guess that's something that that um, is important I, th- I I think on one end for 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 teachers as well to to recognize that sometimes you need to go after things on your own for professional mm-hmm. development not necessarily necessarily the um, wait for the for for um things to come to you so that may be something interesting to 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 share if if it's particular to do with with growth in your in your trade um and again like what um a few of you have mentioned that um activities that our administration bring to us it's yeah it's often often We've 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 been especially after thirty years of teaching. We've I've I've had s- several of the same type of, uh, which is you know there's definitely um, I think it's important sometimes to ensure uh, the message is passed on to the new generation, but um, perhaps it could be done in a different way. But, mm. I don't know. It's just it's it's always kind of tiered uh, professional development maybe like yeah, yeah. some for the newbies yeah, it's, yeah. something for yeah, those who yeah, are during, for during, during, during ped days maybe maybe choose choose the different activity that you'd like to go to and, um you know kind of like today um so <laughs> um so yeah that's just my two cents uh, as uh, as instructors we often advocate pedagogical differentiation and offering mm-hmm. different stuff i can it would be nice if it was applied to uh, yeah. the offer that we get. That's right. That's right. Vicky, you raise your hand. Oh, 
Uh, yes, I just wondered, well, to go on what Nancy was saying with sometimes, you know, it's it's more beneficial when teachers actually search out their own, you know, to make it more relevant to themselves. But I, I find that in the adult sector, one adjustment for me has been there's a lot fewer uh, professional development days than there are in the youth sector. And mm -hmm. those days tend to already be fixed in the calendar. So that really limits the professional development to specific things organized like today and mm -hmm. doesn't leave as much, you know, in the youth sector, we had floater ped days that you could plug in and possibly put in if, you know, Nancy came up, you know, and had a, and for her school or her sector had something really relevant to her that a professional development day could be implemented there, which then cuts out this need for supply teachers and feeling like we're leaving our students um, behind um, in, in, and then having to pick all that up. And uh, it might be more beneficial for everybody in that regards, because I think it's important sometimes when we have to attend these professional development days that aren't relevant um, to us, I found myself like, at the end of the day, first of all, exhausted way more than a day of teaching and mm -hmm. um, just frustrated, like annoyed yes. and angry at having had to sit there and then having to go back to double the work because I had to plan for my time away. And then, you know, that stuff doesn't quite get done the way that we do it. And then you're picking up on, on things like that. So um, for me, it would be a lot more relevant instead of having these fixed, you know, to be able, first of all, to have a few more professional development days possible. And secondly, to at least have some of them a little bit more flexible with their placement of them in the year. Do you guys think that the, the communities, the faculties, the departments, the teachers themselves could initiate this kind of reflection community of learning? Uh, can, can do, how would it be received in your centers if at one point a bunch of teachers went like, We'd like to have, I don't know, um, I'm thinking of a solution that I've heard about at the uh, LCQ, a uh, 30 minute session where teachers get together, somebody distribute the roles, recorder, presenter, uh, somebody brings a problem to the table, the problem gets discussed, everybody leaves. Is this the kind of thing that's possible to set up in, in your milieus? For me, Mark, just to, it would have to be something more, um, provincially because for example I'm the only one who teaches that program in our school board so I need a network that goes beyond my school board never mind my specific little sector within that school board I need something that's where I need the help of you know the other centers in the province that are doing the same thing okay yeah it's like that for so many AGE centers where you're super small when I was teaching I was the only history teacher the only computer teacher the only this that and the other teacher um, and so those days when we did have the opportunity to come together to meet other teachers across the province in the English sector, it was like, thank God, like, what's your email? We are going to be chatting, <laughs> you know? I think uh, your question, Mark, um, I think in the Michelle here, he's our school council chairperson. Perhaps that could be, is that is that possible? That could, that could be a school council agenda item to bring um to bring to um our administration our interest in in um maybe uh whenever it is pedagogical days to and there is there are pd activities perhaps um i think that's that's a possibility I'll, you know you gotta think of the, your your sender director and uh, uh, assistants who they are <laughs> they're not always open to but but doesn't hurt to bring it to the table would be my answer to what you just mentioned, uh, Mark. And I'm just wondering if if a school council would be the right platform. I don't have the answer to that. It, I think it's going to vary. In some centers, it might be a direct conversation with the administration. Right. Uh, that consultants. Yeah, but, definitely. Because like whoever's the making the calendar, right? It would you need to like coordinate. If you wanted to do like Vicky was talking about multiple center collaboration, then you need to get like the calendars aligned across multiple boards that on May 12th, yeah, all this, like everybody's got a pet day on May 12th so that we are able to get together and mm -hmm. do that coordination. So it's, it's definitely, I think, a bit easier at the local level to do something like 
PLC professional learning community style if you have if you're lucky enough to have a, a larger department. For sure, our center is pretty big, so so I think it it, it's, it could be fitting where there's multiple activities going on mm -hmm. um, on a, on on a given center's ped day. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering in in the adult general education, do you have uh, the equivalent of what Proceed has set up that that discussion forum that called vt.proceed.ca, where there's a room for each program uh, in vocational where teachers can share news, updates, uh, we comment on We started events. to set something up. It hasn't quite gotten off the ground in the way that we'd hoped. Like Vicki, like with the social integration network, that is the, the network that has the most going on for it because there's like a pet consultant at Lester B, Matthew Kennedy, and like one of the IC people who are both super into that. And like, so it takes like people to be spearheading that initiative. Uh, it could also, if it if it doesn't go directly to school council, it could also go through the the various pick committees in each centers as well. It could be it could be spearheaded by that committee. Uh, mm -hmm. especially if there's funds need to be mobilized and it's not coming from the administrator funds on, on pet days, for example, uh, it, it could be, yeah, that could be, that could be the source or the initi the initiators could be the, uh, the pick committee. In my analysis of the statistics, I stated that teachers like PD. Is it true? Am I right? I think that's like a, conditional you like it if you think it's relevant to you yeah i agree with 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 what you're saying emily okay if if it's something that we could uh if it's relevant to us if it's something that we feel that we could benefit from if it's uh kind of same old same old then you know it's uh we all as we stated at the beginning many of us uh, were we're awfully busy. So if it's same old, same old, it's mm -hmm. just like um, you're thinking about the other things that you could be doing. Yes. Yeah. The time is so precious. And we're we're uh, getting close to the end of our time. To oh, Vicky, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, like the when you talked about the VT ones of setting up, I remember hearing about that last year. But if I'm not mistaken, it requires again, like for for teachers to um to feed that you know to mm -hmm. feed that to put articles and to put questions and then but then on the receiving end you know you're receiving these these multiple emails about somebody new has put in That's a new true. post and somebody think and for me it just gets overwhelming overwhelming um, I'd rather hey you know what we're meeting at this time uh you know once a month and we're all together as peer and we ask those questions and we do it and then that's that you know but with all of the emails that we get from all sorts of things from unions to directors to you know parents or whatever or their students then it just gets to be a lot and I don't I don't know you could answer best but have been have the have the VT feeds been fed a lot by teachers you know putting new articles or putting new things or I'm not it's just more of a question like how successful has it been and is it maybe uh, more beneficial to have a you know a set meeting time once a month you know and and that in lieu they get compensatory time on a ped day or something you know for that hour that they use or whatever um, or that it counts in their OPD or or whatever um, that they if it's set in their schedule. I, I I think unfortunately you're absolutely right. Like the 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 VT dot proceed site has been up for about a year and a half, and I'm starting now to see posts from people I don't know. Like before that, it was uh, Robert Long, uh, Jean, what's his name? I don't know. Sorry, Jean Bouchard. I, I don't, Jean Bouchard. Uh, me once in a while when I publish the VT VT newsletter. But um, so the fact it, that it comes from teachers doesn't change anything to the fact that it's just an email or a notification. That's what you're saying, Vicky, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I absolutely hear that, Vicky, that like as cool as it is to be able to communicate whenever, like 
to, it takes time to contribute and then to like exactly process all of that when we have a million emails in our inboxes all the time. But that live conversation is often what makes it, what makes the experience. We do kind of, we're starting to do some of that on the Anglo side in adult general education, a bit like how you have the social integration network. We have what we call après cours that are subject specific. There's nothing like that in VT at this point. That could be an, an idea. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> as something to think about um because I know like we've started to do that a little bit at Riverside but the accounting and secretarial teachers will meet once a month and we'll exchange ideas um about it's not like a meeting to say like to give information but like let's talk about you know all of our pro all of our programs are online for, for our business program so like how do we engage students in online learning what does that look like what have you tried um but we don't necessarily have that going at a provincial level for vocational training yet so that, you know, cooking teachers at PAC can talk to cooking teachers wherever else cooking is offered in the Anglo world or in the Franco world as well. What's, what's happening in the Francophone sector that we can learn from? That'd be cool. And I think having head consultants at those meetings is crucial because then that's where they can take the information or the questions and say, okay, yeah, I think there's a need for professional development in that sector based on the questions, based on the topics of conversation. And then they can go and that's where maybe they, instead of teachers looking for their own ped, then that would be the consultant's job. Here are the questions we have, here are the issues we're dealing with. Now mm -hmm. you take it, run, find us something, then, then it might be more relevant when we actually do have some professional development. Yep. Yep. There's there's lots of good ideas on the table. I, I like the après cours idea that like maybe like teachers could instead of doing it via email they could join, and and it can be even more. Uh, uh, Emily, you were suggesting to determine a team in advance, but it could also be just let's get get together and see what we would need to talk about. Mm -hmm. the, the, the agenda could be uh, it doesn't have to be set uh, in advance. Do we all go back to our own uh, shunned activity and try to continue to push for that? Or do we need to set up something that should we meet again? Should we try to do it on separately on the AG or on the F, uh, VT side separately because the realities are so different? I'm definitely going to mention it too. Robin, because she's the English ped consultant on the VT side, um, pitched the idea of après cool vocational training. But she sort of she sort of does some of that. She has like she'll visit a different center, and teachers can come and like chat with her about different topics. But I don't know that it's like accounting teacher specific. Let's talk about accounting. How can we do mm -hmm, better at mm -hmm. teaching and accounting? I think it's more like general teaching. Yeah. It's more, usually when she does it, it's more as it's center-based. It's the teachers yeah. of this center. Yeah. yeah. Vicky, you have politely your hand up. I just had a question with regards to the après cours. Is there, is it because of the end times of some of the programs that it's from four till five? Um, yeah. Is that why it's, it's so late? Um, Okay, and has it impacted? Yeah. How has the attendance been at those after schools uh, with having it be from four to five? I think it really depends. Like um, in the in the francophone sector, they do them more during the day rather than at the end of the day. And then if you can come, you can come. And if you can't, it's recorded and you can watch afterwards or read the notes. Um, in the Anglo side, we mostly have them at the end of the day to allow for everybody's day to be done so that there could be more attendance but of course everybody has like different family commitments and things so yeah i i really hoped that uh after today we can go um we can get in our different uh environments uh some kind of pedagogical differentiation uh in the type of activities that teachers are because the the, the 
as learners, the teachers are different. So sitting them all in a room, learning the same thing doesn't make much sense. Um, it, it's been mentioned in the conversation that it should be, well, this is not the way it was worded, but that's what I understand. That it should be uh, made, it should be a comfortable tool for seasoned teachers, but it should also be an integration tool for early career teachers and the needs being different teachers should be able to uh, play a different role or get acquire a different, um, uh, different uh, approaches uh, on it, uh, about it. I'm making no sense. <laughs> but I think you get the idea of what I'm, uh, I'm trying to say. To try to uh, wrap things up, we have only a, have a, a few a few minutes uh, left. Um, I'll share my screen again because I prepared a few uh, a few notes. Uh, we talked I talked about it already. The provt.proceed.ca website is was set up uh, by Proceed for vocational training instructors. Um, it's this school year, it's starting to have more uh, activities where uh, uh, articles about the uh, Olympiades de la Formation Professionnelle, for example, are being shared for all the community. And in some uh, departments, questions are being raised as well. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, the model that I talked about earlier of where teachers get together to try to solve uh, professional development issues. The model is called Teachers Helping Teachers. It was developed by uh, Inclusion Canada, uh, NGO promoting full inclusion and human rights for people of, uh, with intellectual disability. But that model is really how to get together in 30 minutes, set up an agenda. Um, it's, it's super uh, quick, easy formula. Um, if you know of any teachers who need, who prefer to be self-trained, you can guide them towards the Campus Récy uh, website. There isn't much material there in English for now. Of course, it's been developed by the Récy over the years, mostly in French. But um, I want to underline the activity there. It's uh, about uh, podcasting material to turn uh, reflexive exercises or stage reports into audio recordings that P students can publish uh, uh, through the Banque Nationale et Archives du Québec. So they can really like share their experience uh, towards the, a lot of things. So also the full references of everything that I talked about before are in the slideshow which is available for you to reuse, reinterpret, and adapt because everything that the REC makes is uh, based on Creative Commons licenses. So um, you can um, uh, request a copy to uh, make it your own. Here is the link again. You can scan the QR code or um, type the bit.ly address in your browser. And before we part, uh, first, I want to say thank you for your participation, your comments, your commitment, your uh, lights. Uh, and I also want to request your feedback uh, on, this, on the session and ideas for a future action, uh, and maybe even your email address if you'd be interested in pursuing the thinking process even uh, further. Your answers are only for me. You're not required to answer all the questions except the three first ones because they're there for statistic uh, purposes. I don't think it should take you more than six minutes. Uh, so I would really appreciate it if you would take the time to uh, answer that little survey. What time is it? 10.25. So... Thank you again for your participation.